um, importantly. Um, you, know, you were pretty your best friend. You guys had some successful years in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. um, I guess you guys are in, in the same conference now. Uh, yep. playing against each other. What's your thoughts on the overall trade? <laughs>
a lot of the hard work that doesn't necessarily get talked about or seen by others uh, is on full display. And I got a chance to play three special years with him. Um, so it's, it's a celebration from me and my family to him and to witness history like that within the game that's so special to all of us in this room and got and people all around the world. Um, we should acknowledge when greatness is in front of us. And I know we have all the superlatives to LeBron and you know, you got the stands on one side and you got the, the real supporters on one side. So I think it's just great for the game that uh, we can all come together collectively to celebrate somebody accomplishing something like that. Tyler said in Cleveland that he and Bron had those conversations at the time. Did you and Bron ever have those conversations in Cleveland about him becoming this? No, no, but in the right way. Uh, I was telling the guys in the locker room, I just like how we didn't panic in those last four minutes. Uh, we stayed poised and they made their, their runs, but we made everything tough. Um, it just felt good to get this debut out of the way. Um, just been a long 96 hours, barely any sleep sometimes, and um, just packing my stuff up. It was the first time I ever got traded in the middle of the season, so it was new for me. Um, but I'm excited that I'm here and uh, just keep things rolling now. After just one practice, why do you think it, it looks so smooth and so comfortable for you? Uh, I think just our approach. Um, you know, we were going to make mistakes anyway tonight. Uh, so the first game, I, I just wanted to make sure, and I think my teammates wanted to make sure, the coach staff wanted to make sure that just we didn't feel any pressure. Uh, and, and I think the, the most important thing that we stressed as a team was just don't force the ball to me. <laughs> you know, we uh, talked about that as a squad where you know, we just want to play natural basketball. Um, you know, I always have to come to me. You, you know, you could play off me. I could play off the ball. I can cut. So they're just getting used to playing with me and um, just seeing how many open shots I can create for them and the double teams that are coming. So our rotations are just getting better. And then I'm sure when number 77 gets back, uh, it'll be even more enjoyable to see and uh, play out there. Terry was the most obvious way that that was represented was, you know, you just for most of the game, not taking the ball off the court. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I love playing off the ball. I love playing with the ball in my hands. Uh, when a few of my teammates uh, can alleviate me uh, of those duties, it feels good. Uh, just getting to my spot and uh, knowing that the defensive uh, mentality of other team is just be aggressive, get the ball out of my hands that time. So I was just trying to beat the traps and just make smart plays, smart decisions. And luckily it went our way tonight. tonight. So one thing after hearing all that, you know, speaking more on the Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving thing, a lot of people was like, oh man, you know, Kyrie did KD dirty, you know, asking for a trade while he's out injured. But I didn't see it that way. I saw it as KD attempted to make the play in the off season. A lot of people not even mentioning that he attempted to make the play way back then. Well, um, it didn't happen for whatever reason. Uh, they didn't trade him. And they said, you know, nah, you're going to be here. We're going to see how it is to win it. The Nets finally got healthy and they started playing well. Then KD went out. And then Kyrie asked for this trade. So the guys, what I took from that is they just started playing well, but nobody was still brought in, you know, to trying to win a championship and stay with this organization. Things behind the scenes in the front office and between the players had already hit its breaking point. KD had asked for a trade. He put out a statement about, like, you know, his players not being enough. Royce O'Neal and those guys not being enough to actually win a title. Um, Kyrie, he comes into this season. He has another massive blow up with the team to the point where they sent them away from the team, gave him six conditions to come back. Uh, had him put up a statement which he's taken down since he's been traded to Dallas about the about the uh, about the movie that he shared. And you know, so at this point, Kyrie was still playing well. The Nets weren't in the same position they were when KD went out. But, you know, he was still playing well. And then, boom, trade request. And, and this is, like, these are your two starters in the All-Star game. And so Brooklyn was forced to end up trade. where I felt like Brooklyn was forced to trade uh, KD, after you get rid of Kyrie, I mean, what else can you can you really do? Nobody else is coming there to play with KD, and Kyrie is gone. So what are you going to do now? And he's going to be unhappy. You got to worry about KD sitting out, not playing through uh, small injuries and all these sorts of things. So is it worth keeping him? No. Uh, could You couldn't get a Brandon Ingram or like a young talent. They The other teams weren't willing to part with them 
after how Jason Tatum and the Celtics made them look in the playoffs last year. So, I mean, now you were forced to trade KD, and I think you got the best deal you could, especially with the four first-round draft picks that you got in return. Um, but this was this was doomed from the very beginning because I felt like neither one of those guys were who you would want leading your locker room. And so this is what you get, and it's not to speak against their talent, but – uh, their leadership skills it just, you know, I didn't feel like was there at the time. So I think we're going to start to see uh, more NBA teams try to build the team more organically. If you draft and build a big three that way, or you can make a trade to add one more person to complete a big three. Yeah, but to go out and just bring guys into your city. Uh, I I think we're going to see less and less of that going forward. And for me, I think that's great for the game. I enjoy watching the game more when it's not like that, to be honest with you. Um, so I, I think it was a good thing. Now the Suns, they they have an opportunity to try to capitalize this season or next season to win, a, to win it all. Also, you know, Dallas is going for it. You got the Lakers. They did what they could with what they had, you know, to try to go ahead and win the championship. So I want to ask John Moran, are you still good in the West <laughs> right now? Um, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, peace.